Hey guys, even here and in this video we're talking about Patrick Moore. I saw this progress picture on his Instagram account. This one on the left is one month, 30 days out of Mr. Olympia 2019. And this one on the right is two months or 60 days out of Arnold Classic 2020. Now here you can see that he definitely made some progress in the meantime. His legs are looking bigger. His waist is overall looking smaller compared to the rest of his body parts. I would say his arms look uh, thicker and so on. It could be the angle, but he looks bigger, he looks improved on the right one. And also, I mean, I wouldn't exactly say that he's more conditioned than the photo on the right, because if you take a look at his lower stomach, it uh, holds a little bit of probably water, I wouldn't say fat, maybe just a tiny little bit of fat. And the left one, uh, his stomach looks lean, but the separation in his quads actually looks uh, deeper on the right photo. It could be just a muscle maturity or just muscular development or whatever, but he just looks overall more impressive on the right one. So he definitely made some progress in the meantime. But the question that I'm asking you and basically what I'm wondering is can he ever really achieve his full potential? So not so long ago I made a video about him. Is he the new Ronnie Coleman? If you didn't watch this video, go ahead and watch it. But basically I was saying that, uh, yeah, it's sort of possible. But what did I say? I said that uh, in 1997, Ronnie Coleman was a nobody. And the next year, he became the Mr. Olympia and probably the most decisive victory of all time and the most impressive physique of all time. Now, what is the chance of that happening with Patrick Moore? Well, it's a long, long shot. It's possible, but nobody can predict that. No, nobody can predict that. But if something happened, like, for example, I would imagine that Ronnie, for example, didn't use GH before or insulin or something like that. And he introduced that and that's when he achieved success because Ronnie was really devoted even before 1998. Something certainly happened that year. Something happened. I don't think it was his work ethics. I think it's one of the chemicals. Something happened and he became the best bodybuilder of all time from previously being ninth in the world in 1997. If uh, Patrick has that kind of potential, if there is something that he wasn't doing before, that's the only chance of him actually succeeding. Now, let's analyze his physique a little bit. So last year at the Mr. Olympia, he was the most pleasant surprise, if you ask me. Heidi Chopin brought an amazing shape, but he was better at the Vancouver Pro. So it wasn't much of a surprise. I expected Heidi to look even better. Brandon Curry winning, everybody pretty much saw that and he looked better at the Arnold Classic. William Bonac looked downsized. Rowley didn't bring the shape. Dexter Jackson took fourth, but he looked better at the Tampa Pro. Also, Steve Kuklo looked the way he usually looks, but because of the depleted lineup, he took that sixth spot. Cedric was way off with conditioning and so on. Pretty much super disappointing Mr. Olympia. John uh, De La Rosa, also disappointing conditioning or horrible conditioning. Juan Morel, same thing. Nobody really brought it, in my opinion, except this guy, Patrick Moore. He was the only pleasant surprise. And what happened? The only bodybuilder with great conditioning was 10th place. He was almost beaten by Luke Sando, who looked like he was uh, 16 weeks out, literally. Literally. No separation anywhere. But, hey, judges came to their senses and they gave the victory to Patrick over Luke, normally. That, that's just logical, of course. But the other guys beat him. For example, here you can see Cedric, how he looked. He was off. He was way off. But why did he beat him? Because of the size. So that is the most obvious weakness that Patrick has. He needs to bring up the size. Now, he's not a youngster. If he was 25, that wouldn't be a problem. Everybody was saying he is the next Mr. Olympia, but he's 35. That's old. That's not young. He, he is almost 40. He's almost middle-aged man. So that's, you know, not young. He's not a youngster. He, he's an older guy, right? So can he progress at the age of 35? How much can he progress? How much mass can he add? Once again, he can do it if he wasn't using certain substances before, if he introduces them into his body right now, but I don't think that's the case. I think he was using everything that he should have used, and that's where he came. Still, 10th place in the Mr. Olympia, 10th in the world, is a huge success, but if he wants to be the best in the world, to beat everybody, he needs to bring up, firstly, the size. 
And I would say that's basically the most important part, but uh, everything else is good, everything else is there, he has the shape, he has the conditioning, the separation, everything, hopefully he will keep the quality after he adds the mass, but there is one thing that he probably will never be able to correct, and that is the shape of his quads. From the back or from the sides, it's all good, it's amazing. His glutes are straighted from the back, his back is showing a lot of detail, a lot of width, uh, a lot of hamstring separation, everything. From the sides, his waist looks non-existent, super small, which gives his body an illusion of looking super freaky. Not so much in the comparison, but when he's standing there alone, he looks super impressive. But from the front poses, his quads are hurting him always. Yeah, that's not the only problem right now, he needs to bring up the size, is that possible at the age of 35, I don't know, but uh, what I think I do know is that he will never be able to change the shape of those quads. So they are not just small, I don't think his legs are small, but they don't look matured, right? If you know what I mean. I don't know how I can explain this to you, I probably can't explain it well enough, but the quads are not looking that good, not full, not well-shaped not shaped properly in order to create an illusion of having good developed quads. And now can that change if he adds a lot of mass in his quads? I don't know, maybe, but probably not. Probably not. So that basically makes the point of this video. And the question for you guys, what do you think? Can he change the shape of his quads? Do you even find these quads um, not appealing to you or basically not impressive or just I would say ugly, I really don't like them, I think these quads are hurting him a lot, they make his physique look uh, bad, so that's probably the only weakness that he won't be able to fix. Everything else is fixable, basically everything else is just about adding more size while keeping the quality and conditioning, but uh, the problem with his legs is probably unalterable. But what do you think guys, did you feel this way also, is it just me, do you think this makes sense? When I look at his legs, they just don't look impressive. I think this will be holding him back in the future. I think this is something he needs to fix somehow. I don't know how. I don't know if it is possible. If you think it's possible, tell me down below in the comment section. If you think it's not possible or you just like the, the shape of his quad, you think this is fine, tell me down below about that. Whatever you think, tell me down below. I'm gonna try to read all the comments and uh, thank you so much guys for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more bodybuilding videos like this. All the best guys and bye bye.